Hello and welcome back to our online multiplayer sessions series. In this episode we're going to work on creating our player list to appear on our screens. So the player list is going to be a list of all the players that have joined the match and for that we have to do a few things. So the first thing we want to do is set up what information do we need from each player for this lobby. And we're going to keep it quite simple but this obviously can be as detailed as you like. Um, so I'm going to go into creating a new struct and we're going to call this one player info struct and in here uh, we're going to set up the various things so you may have things like player name for example and that'll be a text value uh, we have another variable in here and this one will be um, I don't know is ready and that'd be a boolean and you may also have one which is de determining uh their loadout so what is their uh particular character that they've chosen or weapon they've chosen or whatever other information that you may want to pass on um so we'll do a character okay that they've chosen to be and we'll just set that to a character well, uh, yeah character but now we'll just leave it as a character type we'll change this later when we work on that stuff but that will do obviously you can put in as much detail as you like you don't have to put in just this you can do whatever okay so with that done um, we need to set this up on our game mode so the way this works is the game mode here which is only running on the server is going to run an event every time a player logs in and it's called on post login so when a player joins a match this runs including the host and it outputs the player control object that has joined the match. So what we have to do from here is store who's connected and get there and set their player information. So in post login here, I'm going to drag out the new player here and I'm going to cast to the lobby controller. That's the one we're using for this game mode. And as lobby controller, we're going to drag this out here and we're going to add this to a variable. So I'm going to throw that to a variable and we'll call this one connected player or players and we'll make this an array. So I'm just going to disconnect it, click up here and change it to an array. That's fine. There we go. So what I'm going to do is we're going to delete that and drag out the array and do get. And from there, we're going to add a player controller to it so now we've got this array of player controllers selected once we've done that we then want to go through each of those player controllers and tell them we're going to have to set their play information and store that play information here so i'm going to go to the variables here and search for this one as player info i'll call it actually connected player info connected player info and this is going to be an array still but this one is going to be of that struct type we made so player info struct and again hit compile now to set up the connected play information we're going to get it from the gate uh, the controller so each player that joins has their own lobby controller which has its own player information so do player info and set that to the player info struct. Compile and save that. Then go back to your game mode and you should be able now to drag from your as lobby controller here and add it to our connected player info. So I'm just gonna get player info and then we're gonna add it to that array. Get player information and add like so. Excellent. The game mode now has this connected player information uh, being stored on the game mode. Remember, the game mode is only on the server, so um, the server is keeping track of who is in the match. The next thing we need to do is cycle through each of the players and add a player card to the lobby screen list of players connected. So what I'm going to do here is going to minimize this for now and make a short little widget. I'm going to go into user interface, widget blueprint. And we call this one player card. And inside the player card, we're going to design what we want it to look like. So I'm just going to give it the canvas panel 
and instead we're going to have a horizontal box like that and in this horizontal box we're going to have uh, a image which will be the thumbnail of the character they've chosen and we're also going to have their name so some text like so and then we're going to do a another image which is going to be a tick mark tick mark to indicate that they're ready um, for now we'll leave that blank but if i change this from feel screen to desired we can now design the look of this so i want the character image to be bigger than the rest of it so i'm going to go to the brush here and change the image size to 64 by 64. The text I want to make sure is centered, so I'm going to center it in the vertical alignment. And we'll add some padding to it on the left and the right. The padding here, we're going to do 20, and the right, we're going to do 20 as well. And we're also going to set it to fill. That way, the majority of the player list can be taken up by this value here. Then on the last image, uh, image uh, this one here on the right, I'm going to change that to be centered and centered and it should be looking like so. And the last thing I'm going to do is go to the root node of the player card and I'm going to add general padding around the whole entire thing. So I'm going to add 10 units of padding around the whole entire widget. So let's name these various elements. So this one here is going to be the character thumbnail. And this one here is going to be player name. I'm going to tick this variable. And this one is going to be the ready mark. Uh, ready mark. And make sure that's variable as well. So all three of them should be variable. I'm going to hit compile and save that. And that's pretty much that done. We're going to go to the graph now of this and set, hook this up with various information. So all the information I need is going to be on that struct. So on the variables, I'm going to add that struct to this. So I go player info and set the variable type here to player info struct. And we're going to make that editable and expose on spawn. So then when we add a player card, we can set what play information it's going to display. And then on the pre-construct, we're going to hook the play information to these various elements. So let's drag out the character thumbnail first and get. Actually, no, we'll do that last later on when we do the characters. Let's just do player name, for example. Get player name. And we're going to drag this out and do set text. And plug that in. And for this, we can get the player information. And then we're going to do break. And we're going to set the player name to there. We're also going to do the ready check. So the ready mark here, we're going to get, and we're going to do set image. No, no, sorry, set brush from texture. Put that in there. And the texture here is going to be a select node. So do a select node. And what this means is if we put in a Boolean at the bottom here in the index, like this, it will choose a true image and a false image. I'm going to leave both of these blank for now and we'll get an image later on. Uh, but um, that will set that according to that. I'm going to hit compile and save that. Now I want to set up some default uh, data in here so I can actually see this while testing. So let's go back to our player struct and let's go to player name, default values. We'll call this one player name and hit save. Okay, so now we've hooked this all up, we can compile and save this and then close our player card. Okay, so next we need to tell our lobby controller here to generate a new card for each of their screens. So the host and the client will both do these. So let's start off with just the host. We're gonna create a custom event in here. And this custom event is gonna be, um, update player list and we want this to be a replicated event so we want this to only run on the cl owning client so i'm going to change this to run an owning client 
and we want to make sure it's reliable so what this means is that this function will only run on the client that's running it not the server or any other clients and that's quite important because the server also has a copy of this controller and therefore you don't want to call the same thing you just want it to tell it to update it so the server will call the function and then the client will run the function itself but not the, not the server so let's put this into here i need to drag up my lobby widget and i need to know which one it is so i'm going to cast to lobby host screen first and we're going to put this into a switch has authority node that way we know if it is the server or the client that's trying to do this so we'll do authority first and i'll go into lobby host screen as lobby host screen you're going to drag this out and we're going to be able to set a well not drag this out yet we're going to set a function here that will add the card to our screen so let's compile and save that and let's go to our lobby host screen which is there and we have this top box here which will be our player list and i've named it player list and i've made sure it's variable then in the graph i want to make a custom event in here and we call this one uh, update player list and the update player list is going to uh, take all the player information that it needs so this input on here it's going to be a play info struct array player info and the type player info struct and as array we then are going to clear the player list so you drag your player list out and you're going to clear it this will clear any pre-existing uh, cards so if a new player joins it doesn't get added onto it again you it wipes it all out and then regenerates all of them so that'll clear the children and then we want to do a for each loop on this player info so do for each and plug that in so it's going to go for each one of them and for each one of them we're going to create a widget and we're going to choose our player card and because we've made it editable on spawn, the play info option now appears. I can hook that up to my array element and then we're going to drag out my player list, get, and then from here, we're going to add child to vertical box. And then the content is going to be the return value. Hit compile and save that. So that is the player list function on the host screen we then go back to the lobby controller and call that function from this as lobby host we do update player list and as you see the play information is required for this so for that we're going to get it from our update player list so we can make an input on this and make it match player info this is how we're sending data from the game mode across. Um, we'll do a player info struct, and that will be an array. And we're going to, I might as well promote that to a variable as it could be quite useful. From here, we're going to do a promote to variable, and we'll call this one connected player info. And then we just plug that into the end here. And finally, we go back to our game mode. And on the game mode, we're adding the play info as we build it. And on there, we're then going to do a for each loop for each of the connected players' informations. So we're going to drag out the connected player info. Get. Uh, not sorry, not that one. The connected players, sorry. Get that and then do a for each loop on these and we're going to tell each player controller to run this function update playlist so on here you do update playlist 
and you can see it's asking for the play info which we already have we can plug that in there okay so let's test this out and we're going to go and play on the local machine so i've enabled LAN to test it on local machine so if you're unsure how to do that in my uh, online game instance I'll just tick the use LAN option on the create session whilst I'm testing it. So I hit play now and I should see two screens, which I do. I'll just move this here and move this one here. This one's a host match. I click on there. And ah, so the, op the uh, issue we have here is that it is not having enough time to generate the HUD widget first before it can add stuff to it. So if I click join match here, for example, and look, wait till it finds the local session, it is, and hit join. You can see it now updates it. So we have to update it, obviously, before this happens. So let's go back to our lobby game mode. And all we're going to do is before we do the for each loop, is put a little delay in there. And that gives it just enough time for the controller to go through and create the lobby widget, which it needs to be able to add it to our player card list. So again, I'm going to test this out and you should see that that um, little delay helps out wonders as we now got this player list here appearing with our host. I click on join match over here and when the session shows i click join and it will update and show the two players connected here okay okay so next time we're going to end it there so next time what we're going to do is work on our client side screen and that client side screen is going to have a couple of options it's going to have the player list like we've done here so it'd be the same playlist we'll add that to what we've currently done and also we'll have the ability for you to change your characters both on the host and the client and show the information you've changed on our player list so changing your name player changing your character and changing your ready up status so join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can watch all my videos before anyone else from just $1 a month. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.